Hey, good afternoon. Welcome to JTV's Game of the Week. I'm Harry Ferrone. And I'm Mr. Noble. And we are coming to you live from Jackson Liberty's beautiful lacrosse field located very sweetly behind our uh, bus maintenance depot. It's beautiful field. And a beautiful uh, day out yeah, here today, gorgeous. Mr. What's going on? 80 oh degrees out? And it's uh, April 15th, so we're officially halfway through April. How many days are in April, Mr. Normal? Uh, let me think. 30 days has September, April, oh, June, May, November, and so it'll December. be 30. Yeah, see, that, that song never works for me. That works for me perfectly. Doesn't work for me. But anyway, today we got a good one for you. You got Jackson Liberty uh, against St. John Vianney. Uh, they had quite a drive to get here. They do. It's almost an hour away. So we, we came out here, got set up for the JTV shoot, and then sat and sat and sat, not realizing before I looked it up that it's uh, quite a haul to get out here. That is quite true. And you rushed me along in the auditorium as well, but that's okay. Oh, well, what are you doing in the auditorium, Mr. Oh, uh, just prepping, prepping, prepping for for, uh, for the Ferronis, which is next week, April 25th. It's Thursday. It's uh, a night. This year we celebrate uh, 100 years of Disney. Uh, going to have some uh, really fun show that uh, we'll give out some awards for excellent videos. And also we'll have performances uh, coming from everywhere, really. Everything's Disney-themed. Uh, we brought in our uh, ex-student here from uh, Liberty working for Disney World now. And Jeff's going to come in, and he comes in and does lighting for us for a week. Does a fantastic job and really brings uh, a lot of that magic and especially this year, since we're actually doing Disney. It's like perfect. He's it a is. perfect it's fit this year. Right, right He's in one this of lane. our uh, one of our rock star um, success stories, Mr. Jeffrey Bamber. Uh, it's actually Bamboor, I believe. It but is. We like to say Bamber. It sounds funnier. We used to call him Bams too. Bams, Bams, Bams yeah, with yeah. an M and an S. You know it's an N. Yeah. 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 He is, he's figure. a superstar. He comes and he teaches our kids all sorts of things. They kind of shadow him. He sets up all the lighting and effects, and uh, he's he's a great guy. We, we love Jeff. Yes, and he also married well. He did marry. He married up for sure. He did, and Anastasia, his, his absolutely. His a lawyer, so when he's uh, not making as much money as he possibly could with his level of talent at Disney, a place that he loves, his wife will hopefully be able to pick up the tab. We'll wow. see. That's good. I'm going to tell you said that. <laughs> Absolutely. Shout out to Stacy. Yeah. Anywho, uh, game's about to get underway here. Uh, Liberty in the uh, white and red, and St. John Vianney in the black and gold. And here we go for the faceoff. I have a song in my head called the Upper Third Song. Wow. It's my favorite. And into the crease. Oh, shot shit. on goal, and it's good. And that was that was a quick one out of the gate there. Clock is. Uh... Here's a replay of that first goal of the day. Here, Vienni takes advantage, comes right on down the field. That is number 24 in the smallest possible font I have ever seen, Michaela Mitchell. Good thing you have your um, new glasses. No, they're in my bag. Oh, are they? Oh, yeah, I didn't want to wear them out here. I'm still adjusting, uh, you older folks at home, adjusting to uh, progressives and uh, mm, nothing but disorientation and headache first time out here. And St. John Vianney is going to drop another one in, and it's... Oh, two quick ones right out of the gate. Here's a take a look at that replay. And that's number 26 with the goal. Abigail Benick. Hmm, scoreboard up here still says 1-0 for some reason, mm -hmm. so I don't know if we miss something or the mm -hmm. scoring person is just asleep at the wheel. I guess we will see in a minute. Yeah, you know, you never know. It's hard to tell sometimes. Another face-off. That's going to be a bit of a foul right there. We're not. Picked up by number five from Liberty. And intercepted. She'll slow things down. Look for an open man to pass to. Number 10 is going to run that down. 
Alana Schroeder. Sun's going to be ducking in and out of these clouds today. St. John Vianney. Mm, I forget what their mascot is. I can't make that out. Oh, the Griffins. Thank you. And gets the scoop. Over to 26. And she's going to make a run. And no dice. That's going to go wide. Here's the replay. And that's 2-4. Takes the shot on goal, but it's going to sail over. And Michaela Mitchell now uh, in this early part of the game already with three shots. She's got a PK here. And it's a free shot. Another one for the Griffins. And yeah. I definitely think it's just 2-0 here. I have a sneaky suspicion that we missed something. Here's that replay. This is such a tough thing to defend here. You know, so much goal open when you're uh, sprinting towards the uh, goal like this. Had a chance to, uh, at our last game, to commentate with Mr. Noble's son, Easton, actually, who I was pleasantly surprised knew the game pretty well did a good job uh <laughs> it's very different though boys i don't know and it, girls across it's, it's funny it's too it's i don't crazy. know why noble was a little surprised when i said well does he know the rules because you know he a has, lot of folks have been playing sports and really don't know the rules particularly well and to be fair easton yeah. uh knows the rules about a lot of stuff but don't, doesn't always follow them so it's nice <laughs> to know that he actually knew what the he did he were. did he was, uh, did a good job at keeping us uh, on it's also kind of fun to see the difference between the, the boys game and the girls game, the, uh, the guys games, much it, more physical. It's, yeah, it's almost a totally different sport in a lot of regards because it's it's very physical. You can hit and whack and push and do all the stuff in boys that the notice girls don't have any protective gear on. Boys have to wear full gloves and helmets and shoulder pads and a chest protector um, because it gets uh, it gets rough. And you guys have seen the high school boys. It's it's uh, it's pretty intense. It's fun. Sometimes I wonder if they're chopping wood. You know, when they're running around. Oh, oh, swinging at each other. Swinging at each other. Yeah, it yeah. looks like they're chopping chopping each other's sticks in half. <laughs> and here's the face off again. St. John Vianney up to zip. Man, Liberty on offense here. Gianna Roth moving her way downfield. First time... Uh, Actually, first time on that side of the field today. That looks like Melissa. I'm pretty sure that was Melissa. 14, Melissa Diamond. I thought so. I recognized her hair. Had her in <laughs> class this year. Did a good job. And looking for an opening. That ball's going to get swatted away. That's Jacqueline Casale. And who's got the ball? Let's see. Shot on goal. Uh, Deflected by the goalie yeah, there. Really, one with the bounce shot. Kaylee Cole, uh, Maria. Oh, intercepted. Shout out to Coach uh, Hayek, too, for uh, putting the numbers in sequential order for us. Thank you. Ooh, that one gets dropped. Otherwise, that was, that was big trouble. Right out in front of the goal. It's going to go around the post. Got an open man. And, yep. Pretty nice pass sequence right there. And picks up goal number three for the day. And we'll see what number that is there. That is number 14. Sophia Cameron gonna pick up her first goal of the day. And Vianney, the Griffins now up three zip.
we're back underway. I can't believe how it's transitioned from Saturday where I was sitting out doubleheader lacrosse game for my son and it was, it felt like it was 40 degrees outside and the winds were whipping at like 50 miles an hour and completely overcast and I'm shaking to uh, yesterday and today where it makes me feel like I should live in a more southern state for the entire year because this is just gorgeous. Yeah, you know what, Mr. Noble, you really need to figure out uh, on those cold windy days where you need to be working on those days. Uh, that or you need a cardboard cutout. Either one works. I was thinking about buying one of those um, one of those big bubbles. You ever see those that parents get? You know, the really annoying parents that set up those bubbles? I've seen them. They em. get those and they sit in the sidelines. They're nice and toasty and warm in there. But there's, it's a double-edged sword because one will be warm and then B I get made fun of. Uh, for sure. And another one. It's good. I was thrown in by number 26 from the Griffins. And that's her second goal of the day, Abigail Bannock. Take another look at that. Really doing a nice job of getting the open man. That one catches the edge of the post and still goes in. Go with the face off. All right, possession over to Liberty. Making a drive here. Coming around the back of the uh, goal there. Looking for an opening. Pass to hop number 15, Liberty. All right, 18 making a play here, running in. Got a whistle on the play. Oh, so she had a foul, looks like she has a play here. Ah, oh, it's close, it's close, it's tough to see a replay of that. Oh, deflected, intercepted by St. John there. <laughs> Pass over number 14. Definitely putting the pressure on today. Come around the back. Gonna try to pass cent uh, center, number 27. Didn't get a hold of it well. Kind of up in the air a bit. Looks like it went out of bounds there. Four twenty-two left to play in the first quarter. And shot and score. Let's see who picked that one up as we take a look at the replay. Vienna up 5-0. That is number 24. That's her second goal of the day. That is Michaela Mitchell. Back to the center for the next draw. I didn't get that. Could you try again? That's pesky uh, Alexis Siri listening is, uh, in, or whatever her name is. Wow, she didn't get that. Sorry, I'm uh, still not sure about that. I think that's you. I don't think so. 
<laughs> that's still you, buddy. Oh, that's my watch. <laughs> yep. <sighs> Ooh, picked up into the crease. Oh, pass goes unconnected. And 10 making a run. Gets stopped. Just gonna slip behind. Lots of folks back there to pass to. And you have to look for players breaking across the middle like that, and it's good. And that is number 26, who's gonna end up so far in the day with a hat trick, Abigail Baranek. It's definitely tougher in girls lacrosse. I mean, as I was saying before, I was taking another look at that first. Yeah, well, it, you know, a lot of the, some just, of the guys get away with checking people. Yeah, and I mean, not the, the, the stick truth loose. to it. It's just it's so different not be able to check. Like you can stick check in girls lacrosse, but the stick has to be like directed away from the player um, and below the shoulder, as opposed to boys where they just chop the crap out of the boy stick trying to get oh, yeah. it to drop, um, and also able to actually check the player. Uh, in certain ways in boys, and you can't do that in girls. So when the girl has possession of the ball, it's it's extra difficult to try to get it away from her. Yeah, the best you can do is stay in front of them and, and try and kind of block their path, but it's it's not easy. And there's so many fouls in girls lacrosse, like shooting space violations, dangerous propelling, there's rough checks, and then there's dangerous follow-throughs to a play. It, it's girls lacrosse is a different animal for sure. And a penalty as we speak. Thought she had an opening there, but she backs off. Instead, looks for somebody to pass to. 14's out and open, but that one's deflected. And the goalkeeper's going to scoop that up. That's number nine to nine. Just Angelina like Angelina Georgiano. Just like in boys, too, once the keeper has the ball within that circle, they're not allowed to enter the circle to get it from the keeper. Oh, and Liberty back on uh, back on offense. Back behind the goal. All right, Mr. Noble's got to pick up and pack up and leave. He's got to... Actually, why don't you talk a little bit about that shoot we've got today. Oh, yeah. So we uh, are working with the Jackson Firehouses. There's four of them. I believe four, uh, and we're creating a PSA to try to get some volunteer firefighters uh, in the mix there. I mean, it's ever since COVID, I think uh, them just like us, I think have lost um, some of the base. So they're trying to rebuild it. And uh, we're gonna talk a little bit about how important it is to uh, have volunteer firefighters in the town and and uh, what a rewarding volunteer position it is. Uh, it's, you know, it, just from being with these guys the last couple of times we, we shot them, they're just a great bunch of guys and they really just want to help and they want to be the best for, uh, be in the best condition and the best training level they can. And it's uh, it's an intense job, but it's super, super rewarding. So going over there and shooting um, Cassville Station today over off of Miller Ave, uh, Captain Rich Bonner, um, and, uh, you know, I'm sure we'll get some good footage out of that and hopefully get that PSA ready time the spring rolls out so we can get some more uh, people coming out to volunteer. All right. Well, thanks for catching us up. Wish you luck on the taping, my friend. Thank you, Mr. Frone. Enjoy the beautiful weather. Um, yeah, it's, uh, it's something special out here. I think I'm going to leave and move to, uh, move to South Carolina. Uh, you'll never go to South Carolina. No, it's probably true. Italy is way more in my wheelhouse. Ah, Talia. All right, and Mr. Noble's gonna pack up his fire truck and head on out. And meanwhile, we've got the end of the first quarter and St. John Vianney, so far all St. John Vianney 
up uh, six zero here uh, on this beautiful sunny day. Thank you for that excellent recycling public service announcement. Get back live here at St. John Vianney up 6-0 here, taking on the Jackson Liberty Lions. Griffins, uh, pretty much all Griffins so far. But uh, that's kind of how it goes. Teams have switched ends. Absolutely the nicest day of the spring season so far, no doubt about it. This one kind of snuck up on you too. I believe the lady thermometer here is telling us that, I'm gonna guess 81, 81 degrees, yeah. Look at that, huh? Who'd have thunked it? And ready to go underway. Whistle blows. And that slips through. Liberty offense. Uh, the prize got a one-on-one -on -one here. And the whistle blows. And she's going to have a free shot here. They line up. And well defended. That one's blocked. Pretty good job of blocking this here as this one goes pretty much goes for the left hand corner, the right hand corner and gets blocked. Whistle blows. And that's going to be a Liberty ball. Nice pass. It kind of scoops that. Liberty on the move. 
And it's a one-on-one -on -one here. Trying to run her out of bounds, but doesn't work. And 26 again on the day with their second, third score of the day. Actually, this makes a fourth for her. Abigail Benick. She is tough to stop once she gets moving. And wide open takes a shot in the upper right-hand corner of the goal. Well, I'm not sure that they count that as a score here since they have not changed the score. I think that one came back. If we could see if there was a penalty called there. And there's the ball. Hmm, not sure what happened. Back live. And... That's the score. And lucky seven here, St. John being the up 7 0. And the whistle blown. That looked like a yellow car. Let's go back and take a look at that. Didn't actually catch what happened there. As a yellow card comes out. And they'll be playing one person down. And there's that first score. And that was number two, Queenie Lynn. Picks up a Liberty's first score for the day. Queenie with a first score for the Liberty. Also, I just realized when they call her Queen, they're actually calling her by her name. Hmm. Interesting. Mr. Noble out, and Marshall in. I'm gonna welcome my commentator cohort here. Marshall, welcome Hello. Marshall. What's up? Well, first of all, beautiful day out, huh? Oh yeah, definitely. Uh, but it's been pretty much all St. John Vianney so far. Uh, seven to one up here, really limiting the scoring opportunities for the Lions. Uh, they've been they've been tough on offense. They uh, they know how to score. Cross is a, looks like pretty hard sport, honestly, I mean. Yeah, I'm not sure, do you guys play that in the uh, elementary schools or no? No, uh, not really. In gym uh, class? I mean, that'd be a fun one for gym class, I would think. I think we did it for like one unit last year, and mm -hmm. that was like the only time. And it was barely like Yeah, it just kind of exposed you guys to it. Yeah. That makes sense. So. About eight minutes left to, uh, seven, we got seven and a half minutes left to go in this particular quarter, which is the half. And Liberty looking to march downfield, fouled.
Queenie Lynn working her way towards the goal. Gets turned away. And this will be another opportunity for the Lions. And it's good. Oh. And that's Jacqueline Casale. And St. John Vianney now closing, uh, rather losing the lead here by a few. It's seven to two. Let's get a replay here of that uh, shot that she and made. Those penalties, both penalties came back to haunt him. Face off. This has been a trouble area here for the Lions so with St. John Vianney closing in on the crease. Liberty having a tough time stopping them once they get in there. Pretty good pass. Nice fake. Chloe Lynn trying to find an opening there. Ref's getting some uh, movement in there. <laughs> oh, just can't break through. Look, oh, ball comes out. Ooh, and that one's just wide right. And back down in uh, the land of the lions there. Liberty doing a much better job this quarter. Let's see if they can keep them from scoring. And that's going to be good. That's number 27. Mm, that is Natalie Corso. Here's a replay of that shot that they got there. Doing a good job of coming around that backside pretty well. 343 left to play in the quarter and the half. Eight two. That one goes up about ten feet in the air. And she dropped the ball here. And here we 
go. And shot on goal, and it's good. All right. That's Queenie Lynn picking up her second goal of the day. Closes that gap to five as E3. Pretty good shot there, eh, Marshall? Yeah. I mean, I don't know anything about lacrosse, to be honest. But, uh. That's well, okay. Yeah. Face off. Looks like Liberty has possession of the ball right now. They do. Making some moves. Oh, ball comes oh. loose. Queenie Lynn not able to hold on to that till the end. Pretty good pass. Looks like St. John have the ball now. Yep. Pretty good pass. Did she score that though? Looks like St. John um, scored another point here. So let's take a. Hey, yeah, sure did. Let's take a look at that shot again. Man, they're really doing a great job of finding all those little, those nooks and crannies in that net. Yeah. About 151 left to play in the half. And they'll go for the faceoff. Um, looks like St. John have the ball now, I think. Yeah, it looks like it. Well, you know, they are the Griffins. You can look for those, you know, the icons. Yeah. And, and did they shoot? I believe they missed that shot there. It did look like that. They're playing on the far side of the field for us from the bus. Yeah, so it's kind of like hard. Yeah, it sounds see. out a bit, and it's a little glary over here. Yeah. But they do manage to pick up a score there with 125 left, and they're going to go up 10 to 3. You know, Liberty finally gets on a roll, but now they're starting to give up some, some quick points. Yeah. And here we go. And it looks like St. John got the ball here. Yep.
Sun ducking behind the clouds. And, and 17 yeah, takes the shot, and it's good. St. John are up. St. John up 11-3. Take another look at that shot there. Right in the little corner space that they, that they have. The score. About a minute, well, a little bit less than a minute to play, 51 seconds and the half. And ball goes up. Looks like St. John has Pretty the nice ball Pretty nice pass. Again. He's on the move again. Yep, St. John have the ball again. And that ball's going to bounce into the goalkeeper's clutches. Georgiano with the save. Whistle blows, only three seconds left to play in the half. Oh, as they are making a go for the goal and the halftime bell is gonna ring and we'll take a short break. We'll hit up a little public service announcement and we'll be back for the second half. See if Liberty can put something together here. Proper sneezing etiquette. Yeah. Step one, prepare to sneeze. <gasps> Step two, grab a tissue. Hey, here's your tissue. Thank you. Step three, cover your nose and mouth with the tissue. Step four, sneeze. Watch out. Step five, throw it out. Hey, here's the garbage. Thank you. And step six, go wash your hands. Ew. What to do if you don't have a tissue? Step one, prepare to sneeze. <gasps> Step two, no tissue. Oh, I don't have a tissue. No. Step three, sneeze in the inside of your elbow. Ah, Step four, wash your hands. You have the power to save a life. Cardiac arrest isn't rare, but surviving it is. Over 300,000 people suffer from sudden cardiac arrest every year. About 8% survive. And it's not only the elderly that can experience these life-altering events. The number one killer of young athletes is sudden cardiac arrest. Because a young athlete dies from cardiac incident once every three days in the United States. About 80% of cardiac arrests that occur are outside of a hospital. About 89% of those victims don't survive because people around them don't know how to perform cardiopulmonary resuscitation. It's very simple. You can help save a life. The American Heart Association changes protocol for the public to hands-only CPR, which means when a witness cardiac arrest occurs, a bystander like you can call 911 and begin external chest compressions immediately by pushing hard and fast 
in the center of the chest while awaiting arrival of the first responders. It's very straightforward. Your immediate action can help save a life. Learn hands-only CPR. What would it take to change the world? Provide food to the hungry and water to the thirsty. Teach children to read and keep them healthy. Shelter families and train a new generation. Give the poor a chance to better themselves. Create a worldwide network of peacemakers and conquer a disease that has killed or crippled millions. Could one person do it? What about 1.2 million? My name is Frank Wesso. Cameron DeWill. Gaston Cabat. Pat Jaitha. I'm Adelia Villas. Dr. Naresh Goyer. My name is Awal Mao. Gary Parrish. My name is Warren Coffin. Lisa Simmons. Eric Kimani. My name is Eduardo. Marie Singh Arora. Megan Coutinho. These men and women are changing the world. They're members of Rotary. Professionals and community leaders organized into more than 32,000 clubs worldwide. They volunteer at the local, regional, and international levels and dedicate themselves to a simple motto, service above self. That's what Rotary is all about. Vision to see, faith to believe, and courage to act. So many of us we sit back and we go, gee, I'd really like to help somewhere in the world, but I don't know how to do it. And Rotary gives you all the tools you need. I personalmente tengo... Just the fact that you are a Rotarian opens doors all over the world. For members of Rotary, no project is... Um, Verona isn't here, but uh, we are starting, it looks like the third quarter, I believe. I, I don't know. Um, but what's it? Um, St. John is up 11 points. Uh, it's 11 to three. Um, but yeah, so we're gonna start off with the, the throw up thing, not the throw up thing. I don't know. <laughs> And looks like St. John are, never mind, no one has the ball. Looks like a uh, shot from Liberty. Um, missed. And St. John have possession again. And the Liberty goalkeeper throw it down to looks like number three, but they uh, Liberty has possession of the ball. Um, and it looks like she's gonna try to go for a shot. Number two have, has the ball, um, but dropped it. And number two has the ball on Liberty. 
She's gonna go for a shot, and looks like she missed. And St. John have the ball, number 21. She passes it to number five on St. John and pass it down to uh, number 24. And I think she goes for a shot, but their goalkeeper looks like she's injured. It does look like she got injured. Looks like she's going to be okay here, so. That was number 99, Angelina Giorgino, I believe. Looks like uh, Liberty has possession. Um, just kidding. Um, St. John has it now. Number 24, which is Michaela Mitchell. She passes it down to I. number five which is Avery Otino, Otino. And she goes for a shot, but misses. And number 24 goes in for a shot and scores. That is Michaela Mitchell. Let's take a look at that shot that she got. That was Michaela Mitchell. Oh, she's having Saint quite John. a day. Oh, yeah. like St. John have possession right now. It looks like St. John score another point here. Hmm. Looks that way. Oh. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Let's take a look. Replay? Looks like it was by number 24, Michaela Mitchell.
Michaela with four goals on the day. St. John is up by 10. It's 13 to 3. Well, it was about the time in the quarter when uh, Liberty started scoring, so just hoping. Penalty called, and uh, Vianney's going to maintain possession. That ball, I'm gonna have to watch this in super slow-mo because if I saw that right, it bounced off the pole, hit the goalkeeper in the back and then went in the goal. Yeah, looks like it. Mm, I'm still talking about this one, let's, let's see. Nice and slow, guys. Let's take a look here. So she tosses it in, and yeah, it bounces off the pole yeah, and the pole. off of the goalkeeper's back into the into the goal. Nothing you can do about that one. <laughs> yeah. I find it amazing that, given how small the poles are in this sport, that these balls still finds their ways into to the poles. It's amazing. <laughs> yeah. And. Looks like St. John number five. Um, it is Avery Oano, and she's been pretty busy this half. Oh, a nice pass to two six. And it's and another it's goal another there. Goal. That's Abigail Baranek. Let's uh, let's see that shot in slow mo here. Scoops it up and then. This is a really nice pass. Shoots it in right there. <laughs> One thing people like about uh, la lacrosse, they can be fun, high scoring games. Yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> All right, and we've got, looks like St. John possession again. They'll drop behind the goal, see if they can set something up. And it looks like they score again. St. John, that'll Good. put them up to 16 to three. Wow, St. John is on a roll right now. Let's take a look at that shot. Right, like the goalkeeper just misses. Yeah, and her, the defender stayed with her pretty well too. Yeah. It just looked like um, she uh, faked out the goalkeeper. You know, in the boys game, you could always slap the stick, but yeah. you can't do that here, so. Uh, there's no really safeguarding against the perfect shot. Right. And St. John possession once again. Oh, never mind. Oh, looks like they hit each other. That's going to be ball. Liberty's still fighting down and... Yeah, they're fighting to get that ball. She's gonna get... The 
don't think she should end up with a... Hopefully run here. Let's see. And it's good. Alrighty. Liberty. And that is number... quite make that out. Hopefully in the replay we'll be able to see who it was. Yeah, we'll get a little help on that. Could have been Jacqueline Casal. Maybe. They are on the far end now. Can Liberty make a comeback? Well, one goal at a time, my friend. Plenty of time left. Yeah. I mean, we covered a lacrosse game uh, last week. Team down by eight, came back and won. Hmm. So you never can tell. Yeah, but it looks like St. John have... Oh, Liberty fighting for the ball. It looks like Liberty number one has the ball, but she passes it down to number six. Chloe Which, Lynn. Yep. She's going to try to score a goal here. They send it around the back. The pass goes wide. Picked up by that stubborn St. John Vianney defense. And off to the races they go. Looks like Michaela Mitchell, who is on fire today, uh, has the ball currently. And they're looking at the looking at the uh, the clock right now. About uh, about 30, 25 seconds left to go in the quarter. Come on, Come on, And that, that ball's gonna go loose. They should. And that is the bell, or the siren, or the clock, or whatever you wanna call it. And that's gonna take us into our fourth quarter. Take a quick break, and we'll be right back. And it's okay, we Marshall, are. I'll give you a tissue. I know that was a very upsetting. <laughs> that was, yeah, that was that was Mother sad. Nature was not happy. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, uh, we're back for the fourth quarter here. 16 4. 
Never too late, I always say. Is this the last quarter, or are there any? This is, we're in the fourth quarter. All right. So these guys will play out another 12 minute quarter here. Liberty trying real hard to get on offense though. The problem is that St. John Vianney offense just ball hogging all day long. Yeah. Uh, they got to they got to step up their game a bit cuz they are um, down by a lot. I mean, it's 16 to 4. St. John is killing it out there, so Yep, that offense definitely getting it done today. Yeah. I believe, I believe uh, Liberty's down by eight, if my math is correct. Yeah, Griffin's a uh, private school up in Monmouth County. Private school? Mm-hmm. Mm. Teams have switched ends again. I don't know they did that. Mm -hmm. Every quarter, it's more about the weather. You know, they, they tend to switch ends in sports like this in case the sun's a factor or the wind's a factor. Mm. Makes sense. Kind of similar like they do in soccer and football. Right. Don't want one team to have a uh, clear advantage over the other. Yeah. Because of the, you know, field conditions or right. weather or whatever. Looks like a uh, St. John number. Can't make out it's that. Like 26 or 24, but they're slowing things down here. It's like 28. Kind of expect this with a big lead. But uh, number 14, which is Sophia Cameron, uh, currently has the ball. I think Cameron does have one goal on the day. Nice pass pretty. behind the goal. Yep, pretty good, pretty good. But um, Michaela Mitchell uh, has the ball again. She is on fire today. She has scored four goals. Um, oh, well, now five. Make that five. <laughs> She's definitely been a force to be reckoned with, I'll tell you. Oh, yeah. She's been uh, very helpful for, um, for her team. I even say that she's probably going to be uh, today's MVP for uh, St. John. No, she definitely has the numbers for it. Yeah. Uh, her and Abigail Baranek really had big days, both of them. Oh, yeah. Looks like she's doing the toss off thing, and but it takes a bad bounce. They'll have to do it again. That ball does have to go up, up, and away. Yeah, yeah. And it does that time, rolls over by the Vienna bench. It's like every time Liberty scores a point, St. John scores another five. So they're just yeah. trying to get back up, but they, St. John isn't letting them do it. Oh, collision down in the crease. Let's see if there's a penalty there. Doesn't look like it.
Got a little pick me up here. Just get lunch today, not a good idea. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, I only had first lunch. First lunch? Yeah, your noble has first lunch, second lunch, third lunch. I only had first lunch today. Mm. Every defense holding here. Yeah, it looks like uh, they're doing pretty good with preventing them from scoring. About seven minutes left to play. Janna Ruff, a little collision there. See where they put the ball. Looks like it's going to be a Liberty ball. Would be a St. John Vianney ball. Oh, wide open there. The ball comes out. Still scrambling for it. Scooped up. Looks like number 14, Sophia Cameron, has possession of the ball on St. John. By the way, folks. That was a good pass. Yeah. But, um,. The score right now is 17 to four. Mm -hmm. um, so Liberty kind of got to step up their uh, pass. game here. It looks like the and goalie they catches go the ball. For the, well, yep, they go for the break, but the goalkeeper with the save, you're right. Still going coast to coast. Ball comes loose the last second. Looks like Liberty. Um, looks like Liberty keeps dropping the ball. I see that um, constantly. It is hard to keep that in the in the yeah in the small little net that they have. Mm -hmm. Definitely tricky. You gotta cradle that ball as much as you can. Right. You know, you gotta keep it kinda keep it moving. Yep. Up she comes away with the ball. Two on two. Looks like number Good 10. Good move. She's gonna pass it off. Passes it off to number eleven. Queenie Lynn, she's just gonna go for it. And she scores. And Queenie's gonna come away with her third goal of the day. So, let's uh, take another look at that shot here. Uh, it's 17 to five now, but we can see that number two. Well, puts that, that bottom left-hand right corner. There. Yeah. You know, you can see uh, once the uh, Liberty team goes on, the offensive there, they're uh, a, a really good scoring threat. It's, just, right. it's been tough, to Vianney just dominating the offensive side of the ball for them. Doesn't make it easy. Right, yeah. And some substitutes coming in. About 3.47 left to play in the game. Looks like it took a bad uh, throw. And there it goes. Looks like Liberty's gonna get that possession of the ball. Go, 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 go. And Looks like they're fighting for the ball here. They are, and it's scooped up by Diamond. And 
passes it off to Queenie Lynn. Comes loose, but she comes back, scoops it back up. She's just, uh, looks Chloe like, Lynn with the ball. Yeah, it looks like she's trying to juke out. Looking for St. John player here. Her sister, who ends up with the ball, makes a move. Oh, and what a block. Wow. Did that go off the pole or did the goalkeeper block that? It looked like the goalkeeper blocked that right, one. That was a good shot. Nice block if that's the case. Yeah. Two minutes left to play. Liberty ball. Looking for the opening. She's going to pass it. Oh, oh, oh. And the ball comes out. And it looks like Scooped number two again. has the ball here, which she passes to number 18, which passes it down to number seven, it looks like. And she's going to try to pass 18. it, but miss. And St. John have the ball. Looks like she's going to run towards the other goal. Maybe look for someone to pass it to. But uh, looks like Liberty catches it. Able to scoop the ball up, but Vianney regains possession. Out of the air. And she's like looking St. for an John opening. Has the ball here. Only 40 seconds left to play. We'll see if they make a move for the goal here or just pass the ball around. Eh, she's going to make a move. And the ball's still loose. Pretty nice pass. Fifteen seconds left to play. And Vianney picks that ball. And that's gonna wrap things up. That's it. St. John Vianney's offense proved to just be a bit of a juggernaut today, but uh, hat off to Liberty for hanging in there and fighting. Oh yeah. Uh, as they come away 17-5 uh, uh, with the win here. And uh, we'll be back one more day this week tomorrow. We'll be covering, I believe it's girls softball here at Liberty tomorrow. If the weather holds up, uh, probably a 345 start. So uh, keep an eye out on YouTube. Uh, I'm Harry Farron. I'm Marshall Birnbaum. And we'll see you uh, tomorrow on JTV's Game of the Week. So long. See ya.